Just on candlestick analysis. But there are other charts that you can also look and explore. The first one we're going to look at is this one, which is the open, high, low, close bar. Okay, so as, as specified, OHLC bar displays the open, the high, the low, and the close of any given time frame. So this is what it looks like right here. And the way it works is if it closes higher than the opens, then it will give you the um, little bar here. For example, if we take this candle here to the right, and this is where this shows you that this is where it opened, which is to the left. If it actually closed low than it opened, then it will let's find one that looks like that. So it will actually look a little bit more like this one. Okay, so this is like a high test bar. For me, this is a little bit difficult to read, and I wouldn't waste too much time using this because it's a lot easier to see how um, you know the psychology of trading when it comes to using candlestick analysis. The other type is a line graph so this actually just simply connects the closing prices so it doesn't take into account the noise of the market but this actually just shows you where the market's going using the final closing price of any given time frame you can see it's just shown here by this line finally candlesticks and this is what we're going to focus on so this also shows you the high the low and the open and the close very similar to the OHLC bar but in my opinion much easier to see and much easier to actually interpret using this information so how it works I'll show you in just a moment but basically the key difference between the two is that here we use colors to actually show you where the market has actually closed lower than the open or closed higher than the open so if the close is lower than where it's open on any given time frame so for example if it started the day here as a, an example let's say this is a day chart but it and it closed here which is shown by the body then it's shown in red and if it opens and closes higher at the end of the day it's shown in green i'm going to just show you how that looks in the next slide so this is what you must learn to understand and interpret charts. The wicks show you the low and the high of any given time frame. Very important to understand that this is any time frame. So it could be a five minute chart, an hourly chart, a daily chart. This is the high, this is the low. Here is the open because it's green. Because the close is higher than the open, it's indicated in green. So in other words, the body is green when the close is higher than the open. If we had closed here and opened here, this would have been red. And this is what is shown here on the right hand side. Again, the wicks show you the high and the low. This is where it closed, this is where it opened because this is red. If you compare that to an OHLC bar, this is what it looks like here. You can see where the close is here and the open is here. This is what it would look like. And here, the open and the close is like that. So in other words, the close on the right hand side, the opens on the left hand side, but for me, it's so much easier to see um, using the candlestick formation here. So make sure that's really, really clear. Make a note of it, pause this video, make sure you write those notes down so you really clear what this means. And so otherwise the rest of this will, you know, you'll, you'll struggle to make sense of it. So using that, there are actual candlestick patterns that will um, that you can use and we use this throughout the course okay generally as a rule of thumb a bullish candle generally has a closing price near the high of the bar a bearish candle is the opposite with a closing price near the low of the bar price trend analysis is used by traders to give an enhanced context for the above rule of thumb the location in the trend is always an important consideration so these are examples of bullish candle formations so starting with this one here, here you can see the market opens the day. Let's just assume these are all day trades, okay, um, daily charts. Opens here, it eventually goes down, but eventually by the end of the day, it closes up here. So if you think about this psychologically, what's happened here is you've got the bulls versus the bears, the bears pushing it down, but the bulls pushing it up, but eventually the closing price actually tells you who has won that day 
In other words, the bulls here have control because we've closed higher than where we've opened and obviously the bears tried to push it lower but they failed. This one again is very very bullish where you don't even have any real push from the bears. In other words, the market opens and then the bulls completely take control and push it and close it up here. This bar is a little bit more of a battle. You can see it opens here. The market gets pushed down by the by the bears they think that they're winning the battle but by the end of the day the bulls again win that battle and that's a nice uh, low test bar where the, you expect the market to continue higher so all of these are in context of the trend so what you've got to remember is we just get our pen out um, is that you would expect this on say a support line okay you expect these kind of candles on a support line if you're in a downtrend like this then really any kind of candle bullish candle formation will probably find some sort of resistance. So if you had a bullish candle formation, say at this area here, it will probably just find resistance and continue its path down. So trend context is very, very important. So make sure you write that down as so a trend context. And we'll have a look at how trends work um, in the next uh, couple of sections. The trend context. So write that down. Okay, so let's continue. So what we're going to have a look at here is um, some candle formations that are widely known in the market. So you don't really need to worry too much about remembering all of these. I'm just going to run through some of these. But you can see basically what you want to think about the psychology of these and why they're bullish or bearish. So all of these are going to be bullish candle formations here. And then we'll look at the bearish ones. So you can see here, this one um, is a two bar candle formation. In other words, where this second bar completely engulfs the body of the first bar. It's called a bullish engulfing. So if it opens below the body here and closes above the body here, it's called a bullish engulfing. And that's there where you expect all of this to, you know, to continue higher. A piercing line is not as bullish, but again, it's where basically the bears have control. The bears are looking to push it lower, but eventually, even though we've opened that down here, the market basically takes a turn for the upside and the bulls take control. This one, a harami pattern. Okay, so again, uh, I'm not really too keen on this one. Don't really use it, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, the hammer pattern is a nice rejection candle. This one is okay. These ones are good. Um, again, this one I don't use a lot. I wouldn't class that as one of my key ones. This one is a good one. Be careful that you're not sort of getting in too far up because this bar could be high. So just make a note of the bullish engulfing to be good. The hammer is good. The doji is good. So these are great for reversals. This is more of a neutral bar, but it can it illustrates market turns. So if you find any of these bars at support, look to buy, okay, in the direction of the trend. The morning start is probably my favorite setup. This one is gonna get two ticks. Love this setup, so think about the psychology. Bears have control, push the market lower. Indecision, in other words, a fight between bulls and bears, nobody really wins, but then the bears take control. So it's almost like you can see it uh, without seeing it, but the, the the ball's basically taking that control and ownership of the market. Okay, so really completely switching hands, and then the market normally rallies off the back of that. These are also very, very powerful tweezer bottoms, and probably my second favorite. Okay, so I'm going to give this one two ticks as well. Don't see these that often, but when you do, they're normally very good for the market pushing higher. Overall, I would definitely use these two, uh, like the doji and the hammer, and then the bullish engulfing as well. Same thing, but opposite is for bearish, uh, bearish candle formations as well. Okay, so here's your bearish engulfing. You can see, again, it's just the opposite. Small bar, then it's engulfed, but the body's engulfed by this uh, bigger bar. And the most important thing is that it's a bearish engulfing because it closes uh, below this uh, body. Shooting star, again, nice on a trend support uh, and trend resistance, okay, or horizontal resistance point. So make that sure you write that down. This one, again, wouldn't really worry about it. 
the dark cloud cover is the opposite of a piercing line in other words the balls uh, had control it looked like they were pushing it higher but eventually that kind of just completely shifted and the bears now have control this is not a bad pattern normally just results in the market falling lower so it's not a bad one to look at uh, the doji i like again at resistance and this one is probably my favorite it's very similar to the morning start obviously the opposite so the balls have control there's a fight a bit of an indecision bar here not much in it between balls and bears but eventually the bears take control and finally the tweezer tops okay so very equal length roughly uh highs and you have these sort of small bodies right at the bottom sort of concentrated uh at the sort of lower quartile of the uh candle formation again this is a great bearish uh formation okay and that completes uh this section on candles the next thing we're going to look at is support resistance this is a great area to sort of look at where the market turns okay so let's look at support and resistance and this is actually used to pinpoint market turns in the market okay so let's show you how to do this so the markets work like this there is a battle between bulls and bears and if you have a look at the image that's how you want to visualize it okay this is always a battle going on between bulls and bears so you want to think of trading as a game between bulls and bears the bulls are trying to push the market higher and the bears are trying to push the market lower so just imagine visually there's this fight going on between these two they're trying to go up bears are trying to go down our objective is to identify who is winning and to join them when the market is basically clear and the bulls or the bears are winning that's when you want to join and actually start trading because that's when the markets are going to move swiftly and quickly because once the bulls take control or the bears take control the markets will then have no conflicting sort of movements okay and it will be nice clean setups and that's what we're talking about when we sometimes say you know wait for the opportunities to be clear and actually then execute your trades because once you know which way the market's going it's then very very easy to put a strategy together to trade it for example as we saw before when the market was trending up with our c to d strategy it was very very simple to execute those trades sometimes there's a stalemate and you need to wait patiently until you know there's a clear winner before taking a trade so sometimes the market will basically do this okay and it will just go sideways now there are people out there that trade this it's called range trading and you can okay and if the range is big enough you can certainly sort of look to sell up here and buy down here and sell up here and buy down here until there's a breakout and if you want to implement a range strategy you know we do cover that in the applied course as well you know alternatively you can just sit out and wait for the market to be really really clear so here's what it looks like when the market is trending the market is generally trending higher it's called a bull trend when the market is making higher highs and higher lows in other words these lows are increasing you can see the market is making higher lows and these highs are getting higher and normally what you can do is you can normally draw a support line like that so the first instance normally when a market is going to change direction is when a trend line breaks so for example here what you'd be very very careful of is this market now going to start to sort of trend down well officially it's still in an uptrend until this is broken because sometimes what happens is the market isn't breaking lower but it's just slowing down and it might just continue but just slows down that's why it's it's just basically going at a slower rate so just because it breaks the trend line doesn't mean it's going to reverse it just is a warning signal that the market is slowing so it's very important to understand when the market is fast because that's when you can be more aggressive and when the market's slow that's when you can be a little bit more conservative with your stop and your target bear trend again very similar but in this time we're looking at lower highs and lower lows so here are the lows 
these are the low points and again lower highs all of these so it goes from here lower high lower high lower high lower high and if you have a look here this is a first instance of a potential reversal when the market makes a higher low then it takes this out and that's that's basically the end of that bear trend for we make a higher high and a higher low and that's officially now the end and you're looking for the market to reverse and go higher finally as we said earlier the market can also go sideways where it's basically bouncing between resistance and support resistance support support here as well resistance and these are basically ceiling okay this is a, you can look at this as a ceiling and here as a floor once either side is broken okay that's when you know either the bulls are winning or the bears are winning so in this scenario here where the market breaks through resistance this old resistance becomes support and what we know is that the bulls are in control and we must be looking to buy the market okay so any pullbacks you can now start to trade your c to d strategy so it looks something like here here's your a here's your b you're looking for your c taking it up to your d okay and that's where we use the fibonacci tool that we will uh, go into um, a bit later 